Hello and welcome to Sudocode. In this video, we are going to talk about abstract factory method design pattern. We are going to look at the concept of abstract factory method design pattern. When to use this particular pattern, we will also go through an analogy of abstract factory method design pattern. In a very similar way, we looked at an analogy of the factory method design pattern. Then we are going to have a code walkthrough and then at the end, we are going to summarize the video. So let's get started. If we talk about the concept of abstract factory method design pattern, it's very simple, a factory of factory pattern. So basically, it is a pattern inside a pattern. It is a creational design pattern, which is required to create objects which belong to a family of similar objects. The way we had factory design pattern, where we created objects which are of similar type, here we are using a factory of factory to create objects which belong to a family of similar objects. We can understand more when we go into the examples. Just like factory method design pattern, this pattern is also implemented using a common interface and the implementation is deferred to the subclasses or the concrete classes as we call it. One example of abstract factory method design pattern is Java document builder. You can check that source code and understand more about how this pattern is implemented. If we talk about the class diagram of abstract factory method design pattern, it's very similar to the factory method design pattern except that there is one more extra interface on the top where you have your function which allows you to create objects which internally uses concrete factory and the e exact implementation or the instantiation of the objects lie in the concrete object classes. There is some logic in the concrete factory implementation as well where it is decided which factory will be utilized to create this concrete object and then how that object is created will be decided in the implementation of the concrete object. Okay. Let's understand how the code flow will look like. In case of factory pattern, we used to have a client which used to call a factory and on the basis of some parameters, that factory will call the functions which create concrete objects. In case of abstract factory, the client is going to call abstract factory on the basis of some parameters, that abstract factory will call the implementation of one of the factories which internally will call the implementation of their respective objects and return that object. So it is just one more additional layer of abstract factory over here which decides which factory to call and then that factory decides which concrete implementation to call. As usual, we cannot complete any of our video without an analogy. So let's understand the abstract factory method pattern using an analogy. Just like in the previous example, we discussed the example of a factory which produces lids and on the basis of different type of lids, different sections of factory produce those lids but the client has no idea how those lids are produced. Similarly, now this time let's say that there is a huge furniture factory which is a collection of some smaller factories. So the client is going to place order for chair or sofa or table. Ultimately, this abstract factory will give a common interface such as, such as like you can place order for a piece of furniture which can be chair, sofa or table. Internally, depending on what order has been placed, whether it's a chair or a sofa or a table, this factory will send that order to its respective specialized fa factories for that furniture to be manufactured and then return to the client. So this is a factory of factories. Now, let's understand from an implementation perspective how you are going to implement your own abstract factory method design pattern. Let's say that you want to go to a college. For that, you have written an exam and you have a score. On the basis of the score of your exam, you are going to get an admission into a college and you need an admit card for that. Now, there can be different admit cards for different universities and you can get admitted to different university on the basis of your score. Also. Every university will have different type of colleges and every college will have a different type of fees. So our task here is to write code so that we can get a different kind of admit card on the basis of the score that we have received in the exam and also on the basis of the choice of subject. Let's understand the implementation of abstract factory method pattern using this code example. In this example, we are going to create different admit cards on the basis of the exam score and the type of course a student wants to choose. 
in this example we have a demo class over here which is going to be the client of these factory classes it is going to call university factory abstract university factory which will return either this particular factory or this factory depending on the score and then using this factory we will try to instantiate an admit card similarly on the basis of this factory we will also try to instantiate or get a fee calculator for a particular university that the student is going to be admitted in on the basis of the course and the score that they have received now let's try to tackle this from the client class in the client class as you can see that i have initialized an abstract university factory which is calling get university factory and this is taking a parameter which is the entrance exam score if we try to get into the definition of this function how it is finding out which factory to return it is checking the score and the cutoff if the score is greater than cutoff it is returning ivy league university factory if the score is less than cutoff it is returning public university factory now you can also see that every university factory have two more abstract methods which is get admit card and get fee calculator that means that both these factory classes have to implement these functions get admit card and get fee calculator the response to these functions is calculated on the basis of the course on the basis of the course an admit card with respect to a particular college is written if it's a math course mit admit card is written if it's a physics course caltech admit card is written if it's a cs course georgia tech admit card is written the same logic gets applied in getting the fee calculator as well if we go back to university factory where we have public university factory as one of the factories that is written it also follows the same methods and the same logic just like the ivy league university factory with the exception of different colleges and different fee calculators so as you can see these particular classes are going to have the exact implementation whereas the university factory class is going to decide which factory is returned to the client code if you come back to the client code you realize that this abstract university factory gets the particular factory on the basis of entrance exam score and then this particular client class or the demo class has no idea how those factories are getting returned from this function and also how this admit card and get fee calculator is getting returned from this university factory instance but we being developers can actually check what is going on in under the hood so let's run this code and try to understand what response we get as you can see in the first case where the score was 125 and the course was math we got the admit card for mit if we go back to our code we can actually verify this the score was 125 which is greater than the cut off score which will give us a, an ivy league university factory and since the course was was math it will return us the mit admit card let's also check what is the fees for mit admit card the fees is 40000 If we come back to our response you can see that we have MIT admit card here and the fees is 40000 the same thing is demonstrated here with the same score but different courses like physics and cs and you can see that you got different admit cards like caltech and georgia tech and with their respective fees some of you might know what i did here with respect to georgia tech and the 7000 if you don't know check out the other videos and you will find out the secret behind this now what happens if we change the score if we change the score to 105 what happens then if we do that then as you know we are going to get public university factory and on the basis of this particular course cs we are going to get different fee so here we got asu admit card and the fee is zero here so as you can see that we can instantiate different type of admit cards from an abstract factory which internally has two more factories and using those two more factories there can be different type of objects that can be instantiated and their implementation can be completely different how this code base supports open closed principle if we go back to this get university factory class you can add here as many conditions as you like and you can extend this code similarly if we go to the implementations of this particular ivy league university factory or public university factory for that matter you can simply add more switch cases here and different kind of admit cards that way these classes are open for extension but if you go to just mit admit card you can see that this particular implementation is specific to mit admit card so if you want to change implementation of mit admit card you don't have to touch caltech admit card or georgia tech admit card that way these classes 
are closed for modification or changes in other classes won't impact this. So in a way, these classes are also supporting single responsibility principle. This is the benefit of using abstract factory method pattern or factory method pattern because it helps us in a great level of abstraction and loose coupling. Now, let's go back to the video and summarize. We are going to summarize the video with some of the pros and cons of this pattern. One of the pros for this pattern is that it's very good for abstraction and it is very useful when you have a family of similar objects to be created. Using this pattern, you can have loose coupling between the client code and the actual implementation code, which is a good software architecture practice to be used. Also, if you look closely at the code of this pattern, you will realize that every class has a responsibility to instantiate its type of object and the details are hidden in that particular com concrete implementation. So all the classes follow single responsibility principle, but also the way factory and objects are organized organized in the implementation. It also supports open closed principle where you can easily add more different type of factories and different type of objects in the implementation. Now with every pattern there are some cons as well. One of the downsides of this pattern is that the code becomes complicated and complex over the time when the family of factory grows. Also it is a pattern inside a pattern. So sometimes it might take some time for someone to wrap their head around it and to understand the real implementation. I hope from this video, you would be able to understand what is abstract factory method design pattern and you would be able to apply it in your day-to-day -day work. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Till then, take care. See you in the next video.